As many of you may know, March is Women's History Month in the United States. Perhaps the rest of the world doesn't necessarily need to commemorate women's history because we understand that women are making history every day. But in the United States, there is a very special, att there's special attention paid to certain marginalized populations and amplifying the contributions that they have made to our country. During Women's History Month, there's a lot of attention paid to women leaders in the corporate sector, in the nonprofit sector, in the political sector, and to the issues that women in particular are facing. I think an ongoing issue in the United States and in many countries in which women are co-breadwinners along with their partners is the issue of childcare and universal childcare. How do we ensure that our children are being taken care of while we are in the workplace? How do we ensure that women, while they are in the workplace, have the voice that they need to articulate the concerns of balancing work and family? How do we ensure that men are part of that conversation? So I think this issue of childcare is a really critical one. The issue of the pay gap is another important one, that women across the world are still not earning at the same levels as men are. And so we need to do a lot more to close that, that wage gap. I think in the United States, actually, um, women's political representation is not as good as it is in some European nations. And we have not had a female head of state yet. We might have a female head of state very soon, but it's, it will become a historic event for our country in a way that it has, that barrier has already been shattered in many parts of the world. Uh, our representation, our political representation, is not legislated in the way it is in some countries in the, Euro in the European um, continent, where you are mandated in some countries to have a percentage, a high percentage, of female representation. In the US Senate, we only have 20 women out of 100. And so there is a big gap also in representation. So I think that closing gaps in representation, in, in wage earning, and in seeing the family as a place of responsibility for both men and women is a really, are really important directions in which we need to move. One of the things that we do know that women need to have as, uh, as much opportunity to access education as men do, as you know, girls and boys need to have the same level of access. We know that when women are educated that they bring along an entire family, a village, a community. Um, and it's not that men don't do that, but the more that we can invest in women's education, the greater the potential for our countries to grow economically and politically. So I think with every generation, we've seen huge leaps of progress for women. You know, one, one of those, uh, when I look at my mother and myself and my daughter, I can tell you for sure that in her generation and, and in my generation, there's a much stronger ability to articulate our concerns wherever we are, in public or in private. The question now is to really be able to use all the tools that are available to us to take those concerns and not just articulate them, but be able to continue to fight for the things that we need, to bring men into that process in a more strategic way. Um, and I think that we need to, um, that women have, have had the tools all along, but we need to trust our voices more um, and trust our talents more in order to be able to move further forward more quickly.